good morning happy monday and welcome back to my channel so today i'm hanging out in central park for a little bit because it is a beautiful day and i wanted to have a little bit of time just to take in nature and take in the sunshine before our field trip today so our class is going to meet at fifth avenue and i think what we're doing is we're going to hop between a couple different stores to talk about kind of like how patterns and textiles differ between brands and price points so i think we're visiting h&m zara and bergdorf goodman kind of as like low middle and high end and yeah we're just gonna go look at some clothes talk about fashion talk about fabrics and i think it should be a lot of fun so i'll take you along for as much as i can and yeah let's go <laughs> I got so excited about the park, I almost completely forgot about my field trip. So I'm rushing to H&M now and I'll see you there. just finished our tours of the stores and I feel like I really learned a lot and I feel like this is a lot of stuff that I'm definitely gonna apply to my projects going forward but before I head out I want to grab a sweater really quick I found one that is from a company called Farm Rio and they have been successfully targeting me on Instagram for years now and they have a sweater here that I've been looking at for a long time and it's been sold out so you know treat myself don't judge me This sweater has been sold out for ages. They only had one in my size and it was on sale. So I had to do it. <laughs> this trip definitely gave me a lot to think about. And I think in particular, it's having me thinking a lot about how I want to proceed with my own designs going forward. Because when we were at H&M and Zara, those are kind of, that's like the places where people shop, you know? Like the everyday person would go to those stores. And the prints that you see there are very simplistic. They are not super like maximalist. They don't make super big statements. They're usually like two or three colors, very wearable, very disposable. And like, you guys have seen my designs before. I tend to go kind of like all out kooky maximalist, which is like the exact antithesis to that. Which like, I guess sounds like it could be a good thing, but the reality is, is that like, I'm a new person trying to enter this industry and I'm making designs that aren't very marketable. And I almost wonder, if that's doing me disservice. I kind of feel like I need to start making things that are a little more approachable, a little more marketable, a little more designed with the consideration of a client in mind because right now my client's been me and that's <laughs> not a good thing. It's not a good thing if I'm trying to be hired by other people. That's what I'm trying to say. So I'm not saying I want to totally ditch my style and ditch my aesthetic, but what I am saying is that like, maybe I create a maximalist print and then the coordinates are more marketable or I maybe create like something else to add to my portfolio that is a little bit more simplistic in design just to balance all the craziness and the kookiness that I do have. You know what I mean? In particular, this has me looking at my anemone collection very differently because you guys saw that print I was like agonizing over in my last video. That print is very out there. I don't really know how many people would realistically want to have that in their homes, even though I love it. I think it is a world of fun. So for the next part of that project, we need to create some coordinating prints to go with this original design. And at first I was like, oh, let me just make some more of just these like crazy out there prints because that's just gonna be like what my collection is, right? But after this trip, I'm kind of thinking like, maybe I should use this as an opportunity 
to take the concepts and ideas that I developed in my anemone print and make some more marketable versions of it. So I cover the whole spectrum. I have the like maximalist designer in quote print, and then I would have the more approachable, producible, marketable versions of it as the coordinates. Does that make sense? I don't know. Again, this is just like a stream of consciousness. I don't know if any of this makes sense, but I feel the need to talk it out loud because it does help me. So thank you for being a listening ear. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to grab a bite of food and then head to campus for my bedding class. So I'll see you there. Speaking of potentially unmarketable designs, this is my current progress on my bedding collection that's inspired by petrified wood. In this class period, we discussed making multiple colorways of our designs, and I worked on these two different versions of my collection. One that's more dark and green in color, and the other that's lighter with more purples and reds. Hello again, I finally finished my bedding class and I'm finally heading home. I was sitting in that class and I'm like, man, why am I so tired? And then I was like, oh yeah, I walked almost six miles today. <laughs> it's actually been a really, really full day and I think it was a good one overall, so. Yeah, I guess I'll see you tomorrow. Good morning, happy Tuesday. So I'm on my way to campus now and I'm gonna head to the open screen printing hours, which is pretty much when like the lab is open for anyone to use to do whatever they want. So I'm gonna make a couple more prints with my bug and brooch design because I really like that print and I'm really sad to like wash the screen and not have that stencil ever again. <laughs> so gonna go make a few more prints then head to a screen printing class so it's a very fun very print filled day and yeah I'll see you there also my hair looks wacky today I need to schedule a haircut soon <laughs> last week I showed you some experimental screen printing techniques that I really wanted to try out so this week I brought three satin scarves to make some fun printed accessories Instead of mixing my own inks from scratch, I decided to look through the classroom's pile of abandoned inks to find some colors to repurpose for my prints. I pulled out some magentas, purples, blues, greens, and oranges, which sort of looked like they could work together. And then I started my printing madness. First, I grabbed my ink colors and I just started splattering them all over my screen. Next, I swirled the inks around a little bit just to mix up some of the colors. Then I used a teeny tiny squeegee to spread my inks through my screen. And this whole process created some really fun marbled prints. I ended up repeating this whole process a total of six times to completely cover all three of my scarves with my design. Because of the nature of this splatter painting technique, each print was totally random, totally unique, and definitely not perfect, but I think that that adds to their charm. Hello again, I just finished up in the screen printing lab and I am very tired and very sweaty. So I'm gonna go find some food and then head back to screen printing. In class, I worked on designing my next print for my beetle and brooch collection. This time we were asked to create a stripe design. So I figured that making stripes out of vintage inspired necklaces and bracelets would be a really fun idea. And of course I had to add some bugs. 
So I started drawing my necklace and bracelet motifs on my iPad, which I'll then manipulate in Photoshop later on in the week. Hello again, I just got out of my screen printing class and overall it went pretty well. I think I went in not feeling super good about where I was just because I kind of was struggling a little bit to understand some of the technical aspects of what we were supposed to achieve in the class, but after meeting with the teacher, I definitely feel a lot better about it and I'm not as lost as I thought I was. <laughs> anyway, I'm now meeting with Ryan for dinner, so I'll see you there. There's nothing here. <laughs> Good morning, happy Wednesday. I'm now heading to campus. I'm gonna work on my anemone print number two and yeah, hopefully it'll be a good day today. So I'll see you then. For my coordinating prints, I started to think about making a slightly more marketable version of this design. My professor helped me workshop an idea to make a floral print that's inspired by the silly shapes of my anemones, which I thought could be really fun. So I started sketching out some ideas. I then played around with these sketches using Photoshop's pattern preview mode to create a seamlessly repeating design. And this is what I came up with. It's still pretty out there and maximalist, but at the same time, a little more tame than my original print. The next step is to figure out color, which I wanna to try to keep as limited as possible. So I started playing around with some ideas using green and purple, and I'll continue to workshop this next week. Just finished working on my anemones, I got some soup, and now I'm heading to Adobe Illustrator. For the past few weeks, I've been working on creating these berry-themed motifs in Illustrator. And now that the motifs are done, we're learning how to make repeating patterns with them. Here are two prints that I'm currently working on in two colorways each. Hello again, I'm finally done with my classes for the evening, so I'm gonna go meet Ryan for dinner and then probably spend all night working on my screen printing stuff for tomorrow, so I'll see you then. That was frustrating. They held us at Times Square for like 20 minutes in the tunnel, then kicked us all off the train, then had us reboard, and then didn't tell us that the new one was an express train. So I just got launched like 20 blocks farther south than it was supposed to be, and I had to figure out how to get back. So that was definitely an adventure to say the least. <laughs> but I made it to campus, I'm late to class, and yeah, I'll see you later. In class, I played around with some layout ideas using all the bracelet and necklace motifs that I created throughout the week. This print still needs a little bit of work, but I'm really happy with where this is heading so far. Hello again, I got out of my screen printing class and then came to this empty classroom so I could work on some of my homework for tonight's night class. And now I'm gonna go get some lunch and then I'm actually gonna go get my hair cut because I need to take care of this mess. So, tiny adventure, let's go. needed haircut. I got a dirty chai and my favorite super gooey chocolate cookie and now I'm heading to campus. I'm gonna find somewhere warm to hang out for a couple hours and try to get as much done as possible before my night class tonight so <sighs> I got a lot to do. <laughs> again I'm finally done with my classes for the evening so I can finally head home and I'm definitely ready to go to bed so I'll see you tomorrow. Good morning happy Friday it's finally Friday so I'm now heading to my weaving class and we're gonna be learning about a kind of weaving that is totally new to me it's called summer and winter weaving and I'm really excited about that so it should be a pretty good day today and yeah let's head to campus. In class, we learned about the basics of summer and winter weaving on an eight harness loom, which is a kind of weaving where we can create motifs. So for practice, I created some really simple flower designs. Then I picked out a yarn color for my next warp. I just randomly decided to pick this dark teal color because I thought it was really beautiful and I thought it also might have a lot of options for potential color palettes. Then 
then I cut my finished block weave samples off of my loom to make way for the new warp, which I'll thread onto my loom next week. Happy Saturday! So I spent all morning working on this vlog that you're watching right now and now I'm actually going to meet up with some friends who I haven't seen since high school. So it's going to be a fun little reunion. We're going to Flushing so we're going to probably eat our weight in dumplings and just yeah hang out and have a good day. So let's go! because you're filming it. There we go. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Pretty good with chopsticks, but that went okay, buddy. <laughs> All right. Oh. Hello again. I'm now heading home after my day of adventuring, and honestly, today was an absolutely perfect day. It felt really good to reconnect with my old friends, to eat a lot of really good food, to see a part of the city that I don't often get to see. So yeah, overall, 10 out of 10. <laughs> Tomorrow is definitely not gonna be as fun though because I have a lot of things to do next week, so I have a lot of work to do. So I'm gonna end the vlog here. Thank you so much for tagging along with me on my art school adventures. And if you wanna see some more of my journey, hit that subscribe button and I'll see you in next week's video.